Hello. Hi. I'm going to get all my stuff organized here. And there's no slide progressor. I know I ask this every year. There isn't one, right? Fine. So every year when I give a presentation, I'm always told to slow down. And I've said this a number of times that I'm going to try to really slow down. But I probably won't. So I want to just say I'm sorry in advance. But I only have 20 minutes to do this anyway, right? It was supposed to be 30. Watch me, OK? All right, are you ready? We're going to go. Are you guys ready? Are you listening? Can you listen fast? What's that? So Trisha, who says that I'm a wonderful wife, and it makes it sound like Trisha's my wonderful life. So thank you, Trisha. You're lovely. Um, she made a point to say that I was sponsored by uh, Tandem Diabetes Care. They brought me here. The slides are a big hint, because their little logo is in every single slide. But that does not make them responsible for everything that I say. So I'm forced to make you read the slide. You read it. OK. I'm forced to make you read this slide, too. It basically makes them not responsible for anything that I say that upsets you. And you can thank them if I say something that makes you feel good. But it just sort of absolves them from me. And so that's, that's important, even though they are on every slide. So let me go back to the beginning really, really quickly, though. So this is being part of a community that is thriving and possi possibly living a healthier life due to our diagnosis. This slide, this is such a long title for such a short presentation. And I feel like there's a lot of pressure on that. So we're possibly living better. I'm going to try to prove that I think that we actually are. So just to establish my existence, uh, my name is Carrie Sparling. I've had type 1 diabetes for 32 years. I was diagnosed in September of 1986, just before I started second grade. In September, I will be marking my 33rd year with type 1. Who is a Larry Bird fan? It's my Larry Bird like diabetes anniversary, which I'm very into because I think he's awesome. And I've always been looking forward to this particular year. So I think it's going to be amazing. My jump shot is not good, but his is. And so I'm really looking forward to marking 33 years. Because I, when I pictured 33 years with type 1 diabetes, I pictured kind of like a mangled mess of existence. And it's been nice to see that as I get older, I have not become a mangled mess. I've become predictably mangled, but not like horribly mangled. And I feel like that is a really good way for me to be moving forward. And also to establish a little bit of street cred, this is the stuff I used when I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. I wasn't sent home with a glucose meter. I was sent home with the P-kit. And I've asked this a couple times, but who here used the P-kit? Yeah? And who here didn't use the P-kit but can like picture how nasty that must have been just by hearing the words, this is the, right, okay. So this is gross. You had to like pee in test tubes and then drop tablets into the test tubes and they would change color. And it was a very remedial, archaic way to check your blood sugar because not only was it a gross process to do when you're seven in the bathroom with your mom. You don't want your mom in the bathroom with you when you're seven, just as a side note. But um, it was also like four to six hours old, this data. So I was basing my insulin dosing off of really crappy information. This was my first glucose meter. We'll blow through these like old sites. You use this too? It was heavy. The thing was like nine pounds all on its own. It was amazing. And it took 120 seconds. You had to walk uphill both ways to like use it. It was one of those really old sorts of things. And it wasn't convenient to bust out at the dinner table. This was my Lansing device. This slide is the best worst slide that I have in the entire deck because it is so gross to look at this. And anyone who used it remembers the sound that it made. Yeah, you do because it's in here and in here and all over you. And if you haven't used it, you should have this in your mind the next time you're feeling grouchy about the size of the cannula you have to put in. Like, look at this thing. This is awful. But all the stuff that I used to manage diabetes aside, I felt like when I was diagnosed, I and my family were thrown into like a diabetes version of Fight Club. Who has seen the movie Fight Club? Who has not seen the movie Fight Club? All right, so for those of you who haven't seen it, there are rules to Fight Club. And one of the first rule is that you don't talk about Fight Club. The second rule is you don't talk about Fight Club. But in Diabetes Club, I feel like it's kind of the opposite. In Diabetes Club, you talk about diabetes all the time. It's your first time at Diabetes Club, you have to diabetes. Like, it's that sort of thing. And it becomes this instant community that we have with one another. And you guys don't all know each other's names, but you all know what it's like to live with your version of diabetes. And the people sitting next to you, you kind of have a sense of what it might be like for them too, just based on these shared threads. Would you agree? OK. So you're all part of Diabetes Club. And I feel like being in this community, it gives us some nice sort of levity moments. Can you read this slide? It says, adventure, I'll pack up my diabetes stuff. That is such a good thing, because it is not only an excellent pun, which I really appreciate, but it's a diabetes pun, which is its own subcategory of awesomeness. And the people in the community are so good at this sort of stuff, injecting levity into existence with diabetes. Like, that. where's Shay? Shaw, are you in here? Where are you at? Right, stand, can you stand on your chair? Because you are wearing the shirt that I have in my slide. Do you see this? <laughs> and I didn't know you were going to wear that one today, and I'm so glad that you did, because if you want to go and buy awesome t-shirts, you can go and talk to him. It's typewonderful.com. 
dot net, just kidding, dot net. Get the dot com URL too. Can you just work on that? Yeah, all right. But um, but like, but this is an awesome shirt to wear, and it makes diabetes feel kind of fun. This is my new favorite one. This one's great, right? Because it's like this nice combination of social media and diabetes and amusement. And that is never a bad thing when you're dealing with something that can kind of weigh heavy on you at times to think that your pancreas unfollowed you. How dare it? It's nice to advertise that. There's also ways that we can carry our supplies. You can carry all your stuff in your diabetes bag. Does anyone have one of these bags? Do you have this one instead? This one's the one I have. Yeah? Yes, that's, yes. That's because sometimes it's not just stuff. It's, ugh. but um, But I find that this is like a nice, you know, you pull this out at the table when you're checking your blood sugar or whatever. If someone sees it from across the crowded room, they're going to know you're kind of cool. But in, you know, in addition to like, the levity and the funny stuff and the puns of diabetes, that makes it lighter. But at the same time, our community gives us the opportunity like form an actual community. So how often have you looked in your fridge, in the butter compartment, because you don't keep butter in there, you keep insulin in there, and you look at this like little vial of stuff that keeps you alive. And it's really mind blowing to think that your existence depends on this tiny little thing that you keep next to like your eggs. That's, but people outside of this room don't understand the gravity of that. And so we all have the privilege of being able to look into our fridges and see this safe stash of insulin. And at the same time, while we're grateful for that, it helps create more community and family for us because we become aware of the people who aren't sure where their next injection of insulin is coming from. And it kind of makes you take stock in what you have available to you. It also makes you want to grow your family and kind of take care of people who aren't as lucky. And I feel like that is part of being part of this. It's not just the bags that say, oh, my diabetes shit. It's stuff like this. It's being aware of what we need to do to take care of one another. Would you agree with that? Okay. I, it, it's fine if you clap. It's better if you go donate to organizations that take care of people who are in search of insulin. But like, we can go back to that in a minute because it can be funny and serious at the same time. And I'm going fast, so I'm going to slow down. But another thing that I'm very excited about, about being part of the community is that I have had access to some incredible technology. So I'm currently wearing uh, the Tandem. I'm supposed to like use a registered trademark sign, I'm sure, when I say this. But the... Um, the Tandem X2 insulin pump that when they come out with updates, I can download them, like suck that information from the internet and slap it into my pump without having to get a new pump. And I'm wearing a continuous glucose monitor that checks my blood sugars every five minutes. And if you told the girl who was peeing into test tubes 33 years ago that this is the kind of stuff that I would have access to to take good care of myself, it would blow my mind. Would, would it blow yours? Does it blow yours when you think of how much stuff that we have available to us now that makes diabetes like a back burner sort of issue, more so than it ever has been before. Community matters, and I like that we're all kind of learning and growing together. To that same end, how often have you been like at a dinner table and everyone, some, actually one person takes out their phone, right? And then everybody takes out their phone? You've seen that. It's the worst social trend ever. Someone feels the need to check a text message and all of a sudden everyone's looking at their phone and all of a sudden everyone's looking at their devices. That's the bad version of this. The good diabetes version of this is how often have you heard someone beep in this conference? But wait, so you hear them beep and sometimes it's a low alarm and you feel compelled to chuck a thing of glucose tabs at them. But at the same time, it probably prompts you to want to look at your own blood sugars too, right? So you are inspired to check in on your own diabetes because you know that the people around you are. It is the good version of everyone touching their cell phones at the dinner table. This is a good thing and that part of this community is good because it kind of instills this forward motion to taking good care of ourselves. And even after this conference, that becomes an inertia that we can kind of ride for a little bit. Hopefully we'll continue to keep checking in on our diabetes. Would you agree with that? Yes. Am I going too fast? No, you guys listen super fast, awesome. You want me to speed it up a little bit? You're, okay. So anyway, it's gonna be like an auction by the end of this. Um, and then also this sort of thing. So as people with diabetes, we are encouraged to be proactive about our care. We're encouraged to check our blood sugars. We're encouraged to seek out problems before they're actual problems. Like that is part of living with this condition. And I feel like as a community, that extends into other parts of our real lives, right? Like other health conditions sort of stuff. How often do you go to the dentist? Because you just know that you're supposed to. Every three months, your insurance is good. Um, <laughs> But this sort of like you go for your maintenance exams, you go for your uh, annual exams, you have your teeth cleaned, you do all these things because you know preventative care matters. I think that people with diabetes are sometimes healthier than their non-diabetic counterparts because we're forced to always be thinking about these sorts of things. And not in a bad way, in a good way, in a way that takes good care of ourselves. But I mean, my friends sometimes don't go to the doctors and have their annual physician appointment for three years. I'm like, that's not what annual means. You know what I mean? So I think it's really good as a community that we are encouraged to take good care of ourselves. And even, and even 
On Diabetes Month, I take a little pride in what we as a community are doing to thrive. Diabetes Month is in November. Society doesn't pay a lot. Diabetes Month for us is every month. I mean, I know that. But like Diabetes Awareness Month is in November. And I find it very empowering that our community helps take this disease and this condition and push it to the forefront of even media narratives so that they are paying attention too because that helps us move the needle, really bad pun, on research and advancements towards cure therapies. That is a very powerful thing that our community is doing every single day. You guys feel that, right? These are not rhetorical questions. You actually feel that, right? Okay. Good job. Can you read this? Read it fast. This community has also given rise, hi everybody over here, to weird words that we say that other people don't understand what they are, but they are very real to us. How many of you have heard the term rage bolus? Do you know it? Who hasn't? Do you know what it is? Okay. So like when you're 200 or 300 and you take a unit or two and nothing happens and you take a unit or two a couple minutes later and nothing happens and 15 minutes later just banging on all the buttons on your pump just to make something happen because you're angry. It's not precision dosing. It's rage bolusing. This I've mentioned in previous presentations, so I'm sorry for those who are the faint of heart, but if you're a lady and you're wearing an insulin pump and you have to put it somewhere, perhaps in a dress that doesn't have pockets, you have to shove that thing in your bra. And that lights up when you bolus, thus giving you disco boobs. This is something that people are aware of. Yeah. It is a real thing, and gentlemen, you're welcome to try it. <laughs> or a confirmation low. And I don't know if this is just me, but when I've mentioned this to other people, it does seem to resonate for them. When you feel kind of low, but then you check your blood sugar and you see the number, and all of a sudden all the symptoms come and just slap you in the face because it's confirming that you are dying in that moment, right? Confirmation low. Thank you. I seriously thought I was the only one that... If, my husband thinks it's really weird. He's like, you knew you were low the whole time? I'm like, yeah, but not till I saw it. <laughs> or, and for those of us who are wearing diabetes devices, like the power and the magic of a free shower. Did anyone take one today? Did anyone get a free shower while they were here? Do you did? You're like the house hero right now, for real. Because it's just that it's the, like you're actually naked in that moment, like for real, instead of getting all scritchied up and trying to put the shower poof over some stupid infusion set. It's amazing. You feel embarrassed, but we're very jealous. So <laughs> free shower, awesome stuff. Because it's about like celebrating stuff, right? It, diabetes can be a little bit of a mood dampener at times, and it can be a little distressing at other times. But part of being part of this community is finding the small things to celebrate, those small victories. And Jeremy had talked about a lot of those yesterday where he was talking about keeping a CGM sensor on for like 106 years, right? That is a weird small victory, but there are so many of them that only the people in this room can really understand. Like what it's like to only spend five minutes on the phone with an insurance company instead of 50. Which sounds like something you shouldn't be so excited about, but it is really exciting, right? Like, it only took me eight minutes to fill my prescriptions. Nice job, not three days. Nice job. Like, that feels good. Or if you walk by a doorknob with your pump tubing hanging out and it doesn't grab it, <laughs> not today doorknob is a nice moment. Like, I am into that very, very much. Or if you are one of those really good people and you changed your Lancet today. <laughs> no, no one's, but wait, we have one free shower. Who changed their Lancet? One, two, like two hands. Almost as many free showers as that is really sad. Change your lancets, people. This is a PSA for that. But it's a nice victory. When you do it, you feel like you've done something good for the day. Even if the number looking back at you on your meter is garbage, you change your lancet. That is a small victory. I think being, this is real deal, right? So I think being part of this community, it doesn't, it doesn't make me feel pressured to be perfect. It makes me feel like it's okay to be normal and to struggle and to have the literal and figurative, figurative ups and downs of life with diabetes. That you don't have to be the best diabetic, you can be like the okayest diabetic. And I'm really into that because I feel like that speaks to an achievable goal, to continue to do the best that we can, right? Instead of feeling like we have to constantly beat ourselves up for not doing it perfectly all the time. I also think it's nice to sort of, when people ask, like, do you have the bad kind? No, you don't. You have the badass kind. And that is very, very different, but also extremely empowering. Not going too fast, right? Okay. I like this too, very, very much, because there was this one time I was on a plane and I was sitting next to this guy who just happened to strike up conversation. He was asking where I was going, and this was a few years ago. And I said, I'm going to a diabetes conference. He's like, well, what is that? And I said, well, a lot of people with diabetes get together and they learn things and they learn from one another and they hang out and they eat food that's 
hopefully carb counted and they drink together and like it's kind of a party and it's good and we all hang out together and he took a minute to assess this and then he swallowed hard and he said so you guys you like hang out and you're just weird together and I was like yeah actually that really is we just hang out and we're weird together what a nice honor to have the opportunity to come sit in a room and be weird together outside of this room it might seem a little odd but in this room that weird feels nice and normal and I'm very into it are you guys into it my last slide is awesome and I almost don't even want to go to it because it is so good bill it's better than the dogs it's better than the dogs are you this isn't it there's another one so I used to close with a slide that had a dog in a spacesuit floating around and it said I have no idea what I'm doing and the dog just looked so gentle and so confused as it just floated around in the International Space Station and it was adorable but I found one that I think sums us up a little bit better because it goes back to the badassery of life with diabetes and being part of this community are you ready oh yeah it's this <laughs> I found this the other day and I stared at it for like a long time because it brought me this weird visceral joy. None of this makes any sense whatsoever. But mentally to me, this is sometimes how I feel when I have those small victories change my landsat cat on a unicorn, you know? Blood sugar or A1C that I'm feeling very satisfied and proud of, cat on a unicorn. Like there's nothing that this slide doesn't cover if you need a minute to feel proud of yourself. Do you like it? I didn't make it, but I live for it. And I feel like it, pardon? Oh, I thought somebody said something. A couple of you said something. But uh, like, I feel like this is sort of like a summation of that we can do this. And together we share our stories with one another. And we try to connect with one another and that sort of thing. And we celebrate our small victories with one another. But then at the same time, we're also able to support one another when you need to be held, right? Or if you have those moments that aren't so good. And you need to be reminded that you can do this and you will do this and that there's a group of people that's here to hold you emotionally and physically if you want to make sure that you can get to the next day and continue to do this so as you guys are getting ready to leave how did I do on time rocking on the time but as you guys are getting to leave I know that Bill did this to you yesterday he made everybody talk to one another right or is that on Friday no that was yesterday you made everyone do the peace 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 thing right he made you church peace, and I want you to do it now, but it's really important that you do it now because we're going to be leaving soon, and they're going to do a raffle after this or whatever else. Take a minute just to meet the person next to you, and I know we've already kind of done this, but now we've had 48 hours to be with one another, and you can really exchange your information. But wait, not yet, not yet, not yet, because I'm going to sneak off stage while you do it, so just listen. But make sure that you find someone to connect with, someone who can be enjoying this with you and like connect with you when you're feeling down or be there when you need to be picked up or that sort of stuff but this is one of those unique circumstances where everyone in the room understands what you're going through and you don't want to leave that opportunity behind so as you're making plans to attend this conference next year and getting ready to like get ready for your next diabetes conference that you're going to or the next people that you're going to be connecting with make sure that you take advantage of the people in this room because we're all going to be dispersed to the wind back to our non you know bubble sort of safe existences around all those people who make their own insulin which is so gross but in this room we get to be weird together so make sure that you take a moment now while I slowly sneak off stage to meet the person next to you get their Twitter handle their email account their Instagram whatever way you can casually and comfortably stalk them and do that now but thank you guys very much for listening and enjoy the rest of your weekend